So anyone who is just logging on for class, again, it's Brittany with Scott Leroy Marketing. And today we're going to be going over smart plans. So these are your automated email, text, and task setups through the command platform. You have access to kind of set up a smart plan, which think of it as almost like a drip campaign. It's going to allow you to add your contacts to this drip campaign, and it's going to send your clients emails. It will send them text messages. It will set up tasks accordingly. Um, and this system kind of takes care of everything for you, which is great. So we're going to go over how to make sure your marketing is set up properly. That way, these are branded with you as the agent. We're also going to go over not only how to launch smart plans, but how to customize them. And then we're also going to go over kind of how to see what your clients are going to get, as well as how to make sure your clients are set up on them properly. So we're going to be covering a ton of information today. So to start, I do have my command platform up. This is your agent.kw.com portal. And I'm going to go ahead and just log into this platform. Once you guys are logged into the command portal, first things first is we are going to make sure that your actual settings are set up within command in order for you to send out smart plans. So we're going to go over that first. So once we are in the command platform, we're going to go ahead and click on our name in the top right hand corner, and then we're going to select settings from that drop down list. So our name in the top right hand corner of command, and then we're going to select settings. Once our settings platform loads, if you are associated with a team, which most of you are likely independent agents, which is completely fine, but if you are on a team, you'll notice that we do want to make sure we are on that personal profile. So if you do have two profiles here, just make sure you're on your personal profile. You'll have more access with that, especially if you're not set up as the Rainmaker. So I recommend for today's class, just make sure that you remain on your personal profile. If you are looking to set things up as a team, we do also have a team marketing class that we can send over to you. Now that we're on our settings platform, in order to kind of take a look at some of the integrations that you guys have access to, these integrations are going to be how we send out those smart plan emails, those smart plan text messages. So we wanna make sure that those are set up properly. So now that we're under settings, your screen should look very similar to mine and it should have more integrations at the top. We're actually gonna scroll down a little bit until we find email services. Once we've located our email services, generally you're only going to have command mail under here, which is perfect. Command mail is the mail provided platform or the email provided platform through the command portal. So all this means is this is essentially the platform that smart plans are going to piggyback off of in order to send out your automated emails. If you are an agent that uses MailChimp, that is completely fine. However, MailChimp unfortunately will not work with smart plans. It will only work with email campaigns. The big difference between smart plans and email campaigns, smart plans are what we are going to be going over today. These are more so the automated emails, tasks, text messages, kind of more so of a drip campaign. Email campaigns are going to be one and done emails that you send out. So it would be one email, you would send it out, and then it would be done. It wouldn't tr trigger another email. It wouldn't trigger a text message. It wouldn't trigger a task. It would essentially just be kind of like sending out a mass email versus those automated drip campaigns. So if you guys are looking to send out kind of that one and done email, you can do that through MailChimp. However, smart plans at this time only communicate with command mail. So we want to make sure that command mail is set up properly for you. So once we've located our command mail section, we're going to go ahead and just click on manage. It should be on the right hand side. Once we go ahead and click on manage, if you haven't set this up previously, you guys can plug your information in right here. If this is already set up and looks correct, don't panic. You can actually leave it as is, but we just want to make sure that everything is spelt correctly, that the correct email is selected, and it looks good on your end. 
So first things first, sender name. We want to make sure that your name is set up how you want it to show for your clients. So if you are Jonathan, but you go by John and all your clients know you as John, make sure that this is plugged in as John. Same thing if you happen to go by like a middle name or a nickname, anything along those lines, this is going to be for your vanity name. So this is what your clients will actually see. If your name already looks good, we also want to double check our reply to email. In regards to your reply to email, any smart plan that you send out is going to come from a specific email address. This is something to keep in mind. Once that email is sent out, it comes from that email. However, when your clients reply to that email that you send out using smart plans, it will automatically go into the inbox of your reply to email. The best way to think of this is anytime your client replies to either an email campaign that you send out through command mail or a smart plan email that you send out through command mail, whatever is set up as your reply to email is where that actual response from your client is going to go. So you wanna make sure that this is an email that you check regularly and also an email that you plan on using for your real estate marketing. If this is not the correct email, you can select from the drop down list. You'll notice that you have a couple of different options based on what's on your actual marketing. However, my personal recommendation, if you are changing this email or if you ever have any issue with your smart plan email not showing up correctly, even though it's showing up in this box, click add custom email. Once you click on add custom email, you can type in whatever email you're looking to use and add that email, it kind of overrides everything that's on that drop down list and makes sure that whatever email you put into this text box is the correct email. So if you guys ever have to change it, or maybe you change your branding or anything like that, that's the best route to do it because it seems to kind of trump all of the other options. Cancel on that. You'll notice that if I don't make any changes, my save changes is grayed out. That is completely fine. It just means that we are good to go and that's already locked in. If you guys did change anything so much as even changing your name at all, if I just add a space, it's going to tell me that my save changes is now clickable. So if you guys are making changes, make sure that you click on that save changes button. Underneath that, you guys are seeing your monthly allowance. In regards to your monthly allowance with Command Mail, as a Keller Williams agent, you are provided with 5,000 emails that you can send out using Command Mail each month. That being said, this will also monitor how many emails you have left, which is kind of cool. So if you are in a situation where you're sending out a bunch of smart plans, or maybe you're using the email campaign feature, whatever you are funneling through the Command Mail is going to use your allowance provided here. So anytime you guys use command mail, again, for email campaigns, those are the one and done emails or smart plans if you're sending out emails, this is going to essentially deplete your allowance through command mail. That being said, you can provide or you can purchase more. It's based on essentially a credit system through the marketplace. Anytime you guys notice that your emails are getting low and thankfully the system will remind you, which is pretty cool, um, anytime you notice that they are getting low, you can come in here and do manage subscription, and it will actually bring you to the pricing if you want to purchase additional emails. Um, that is definitely an option, especially if you're either on a spouse team or you're just on a mega team, anything along those lines where you guys might be sharing a command mail account. Generally, we've seen them have to update their subscription and purchase additional emails. So that is definitely an option if you guys end up in that situation. Once you guys do click on manage subscription, it pulls up all of the packages for you. You can essentially select the one that would apply to you, and then it will ask you to enter in your credit card information if you haven't already put a credit card on file for the marketplace. And then it will auto charge your account for that time. Um, and then going forward, generally this has to be done each month. There isn't a way to just update your subscription going forward. So it would need to be manually purchased each month if you are consistently going over that 5,000 5, email allowance. So that's just something to keep in mind. Once you've confirmed that your save changes is selected, we can go ahead and just X out of this. Underneath that, we have our Twilio option. If you have not purchased Twilio, don't panic. You do not have to purchase Twilio in order to utilize smart plans. However, if you are looking to send out mass text messages through the smart plan portion, you will need to purchase Twilio. 
Twilio is also a essentially third-party platform that feeds through command. It is based on a credit system, meaning that you would select subscribe in marketplace, what it will do is it's going to give you a bunch of different options based on how many credits you'll be given for text messaging, um, depending on the size of the text message, if there's an image involved, anything along those lines will kind of let you know how many credits it will utilize. Um, this being said, when you sign up for Twilio and you're sending out text messages through smart plans, keep in mind that each text message sent out will take a certain amount of credits. And on top of that, it will be the credit amount will be taken based on how many people you add to that smart plan. And I hope that makes sense. That sounded very confusing. Um, but if you say you add 20 people to a smart plan and the text messages that you have set up are going to take six credits per text message, keep in mind that it's going to be six credits per, per each person, meaning 20 people. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. The credits, as far as Twilio goes, Twilio will also alert you once you start to get low. Um, so if you start to run out of credits, you can always purchase more mid-month. You're not stuck in that package, um, but it is something to keep in mind just to kind of keep an eye on what you're sending out when you're using smart plans. I always recommend doing a test smart plan first, and that's something that I will probably say another four or five times throughout this class. Um, but anytime you guys are setting up a smart plan, always set yourself up on it first, just so you can run the full course of the smart plan. Not only is this going to allow you to see how many credits were used for that specific smart plan, whether it's based on the command mail or Twilio, but it's also going to allow you to kind of spell check everything, make sure it looks correct, make sure that it makes sense for your client um, as they're going to be receiving it. So if you guys haven't signed up for this, you can do it right under the settings portion. We do have a quick tip video that goes over how to set that up as well, which is in the notes. We'll also make sure that it's hyperlinked under the recording for you guys, just in case. Um, but yeah, you guys can sign up for this. However, keep in mind, it's not required to use smart plans. You just would not be able to utilize the texting portion of smart plans without Twilio in place. Now that we've gone over the options in regards to sending the information out using smart plans, the last thing we want to check under settings is going to be your marketing profile. So in order to access your marketing profile, we're going to remain under settings. We're just going to expand on connect settings, and then we're going to see marketing profile is nestled right underneath that. We're going to go ahead and click on marketing profile. And for this, most of you will likely have this set up. This might be repetitive. You may have seen this in another class, but we just wanna make sure that all of our I's are dotted and T's are crossed. In regards to smart plans, the way that they are sent out is it actually creates an email signature on your emails that are sent out. So when you send out, whether it is an email campaign, those one and done emails, or an email via smart plans, it's going to add an email signature that pulls from your marketing profile. So making sure that this information is as up to date as possible, that it makes sense, that it has all of the correct contact information is imperative because this is how your clients are essentially going to reach back out to you if they opt to call you, text you, rather than just reply to that email. So first things first, we have your headshot or Lori's headshot. If you guys are seeing that this is distorted, you do wanna make sure that it is corrected. Um, however you are seeing it populate within this circle is how it's going to populate on all of your marketing. So your headshot does need to be cropped to be a perfect square in order for it to show up correctly on all of your command marketing. This also means your website, your mobile app, everything that pulls from your command marketing profile, however you see it here is how it's going to show up everywhere. For your team logo, not the same case, thankfully. You'll notice that Lori's logo looks very wonky here. However, on all of her marketing, the team logo as well as the brokerage logo, which is gonna be a little bit lower, will automatically correct themselves to show up correctly, which is fantastic. So if you guys happen to have a team logo or a brokerage logo, your DBA logo for your market center, um, generally those are more of a rectangular shape versus a square. So the system will actually correct those for you automatically. If you do not have a team logo currently, we do recommend adding the Realtor logo, a general KW logo, something along those lines, because as you send out email campaigns or smart plan emails, if there is no team logo added, it will show an error message. It actually shows no image found if there is no image added to your team logo section. Um, I would not recommend adding your DBA logo for your market center. 
as you'll notice a little bit lower, there is a specific spot for that. So if you replicate it, it will show up twice on all of your emails. So that's why the Realtor logo, um, if you guys have a general KW logo, or if you have a team logo that you're using even as an independent agent, maybe just like a marketing logo, you can also utilize that here as well. Scrolling down a smidge, just kind of do a once over on your details. Make sure your name is spelt correctly, especially if you go by a nickname, make sure that's what's showing up. Make sure if your last name is hyphenated and that's how you want it to show up, make sure that's here. Just kind of do a once over and confirm that the information you have plugged into your details actually makes sense. Um, for your slogan, you'll notice that slogan is required now. If you don't have anything in here, we generally plug in either for all of your real estate needs, or you can copy your team name and just replug that in here, whatever you guys want. Or if you have a custom slogan that you're going by, you can also type that in here, but you'll notice it is required, so it will need to be added in. And for some reason, if you had one previously and you come into this section, it doesn't actually save it, so you'll need to replug that in. Designations, if you guys have any designations, you'll wanna plug those in as well. And then for our military affiliation, if you are associated with the military, you would just select whichever one applies to you on the dropdown. Once you've select the one that applies, all of the branches will show up on the right-hand side. If you're not associated with the military, you can just leave it blank and it won't show up on your marketing. We also have our bio. You'll wanna make sure this is plugged in as well. If you don't have a bio yet, again, don't panic. You guys can update this at any point in time. And you guys can also update this as frequently as you'd like, which is great. Nothing is set in stone on this page. We also have contact information. So for the mobile number and office number, you'll notice that neither of these actually have punctuation. You are more than welcome to add punctuation, whether you wanna do like the dashes, whether you wanna do parentheses, Anything along those lines, you guys can plug those in. You guys can use periods. Um, however, keep in mind that most of your marketing will automatically plug that in for you. It will also be clickable from mobile devices, which is pretty cool. Um, but if you're sending it, obviously, as an email and someone opens their email on their computer, that will not be clickable. But if they open it on their phone, it will allow them to click and call you no matter what your punctuation is on the email. The system actually takes care of it for you. But if you do want the dashes added, you can plug those in. They're just not required anymore. We also have our email and our website. For our email, just make sure this is whatever email you guys are utilizing for marketing. You'll notice that Lori actually has two different emails on her marketing. She has her KW email in some places, and then she has her team email in other places. She does have those kind of merged right now, which is why she's utilizing a couple of different emails. Um, my personal recommendation is pick one and use it for all of your marketing, just so you don't confuse your clients. Um, it allows them to kind of know, okay, Lori Godfrey at kw.com is Lori's email. That's what they're going to add to their, their Gmail contacts or their Hotmail contacts, AOL, whatever platform they're using. And it's going to be the one that they'll communicate with you under. Um, if you're kind of juggling a couple of emails and communicating with clients through a couple of emails, it just gets confusing for them. So my personal recommendation is just pick one email and use that one for all of your marketing. For the website, if you guys are using the KW website, make sure a couple of things. One, if you guys are using the URL that ends in .kw.com, this is just the URL that's provided to you guys by Keller Williams International. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind, if your website ends in that uh, .kw.com, www dot will not work. So if you guys have www dot before your URL and it ends in .kw.com, just delete that. You'll also wanna make sure that you have HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash at the beginning of your URL. If you haven't added that in yet, you can type it right in. What this is going to do is it's going to make your website clickable from your marketing platforms. Again, it's one less step that your clients will have to kind of take in order to gain access to your website. So rather than them having to copy and paste it into another browser, they can just click right on your website and it will bring them to that URL. But again, if you guys have www. and your URL ends in .kw.com, make sure you remove that as it will pull up an error message. If you guys are using a custom domain, maybe you purchased a URL, maybe it's through GoDaddy, anything along those lines, 
Um, if you're unsure how to add that to your marketing, just let us know and we're happy to take a look at it um, as it would pertain to actually which platform you purchased it on. It will also pertain to the actual URL. So if you guys are using a custom URL that ends in .com or anything like that, just let us know and we can make sure it's on your marketing correctly for you. Scrolling down a smidge more, just make sure your market center makes sense. If you guys recently transferred, maybe you're out of a business center, which is just a smaller market center that piggybacks off of a larger market center. Maybe you're associated with a mega team. Make sure that the information showing up in this section makes sense. Make sure the logo looks familiar. Um, make sure the address is correct. Also make sure it's not your personal information. So if you guys are seeing your personal home address on here, that would need to be removed. Scrolling down a smidge more, we have our compliance section. If you guys have anything specific for your areas for compliance that need to be added, this is based on your state and board. Make sure that this is plugged in. If you guys have legal footer links, text, or images, this is where you guys can add those in and it will show up on all of your marketing, which is pretty cool. Last but not least, we have our social media platforms. If you guys have business pages created, you guys can plug those in here. If you haven't created business pages yet, my personal recommendation is to hold off on adding URLs here. Um, these will essentially show up on your marketing for you, which is fantastic. However, if they're your personal pages, I would recommend holding off until you have your business pages, just so you're making sure that everything you're promoting on all of your real estate marketing is real estate geared. For Google Analytics, um, Google just updated the process for this. So if you guys previously set up Google Analytics, you're in the clear. If you haven't set it up yet, this is something that we can assist with. We also have a tip video. However, they just updated the process. So it's a little bit wonky right now. Um, it can still be set up. However, it will not pull data until command is also kind of refreshed to reflect the new updates that Google just made. Um, so if you guys are looking to set it up, we do have a tip video that goes over this. Um, it will essentially track the traffic on your command website, which is pretty cool. Um, but we have not seen it pull data until command actually kind of catches up with those updates that Google just made. So if you guys haven't set this up yet, feel free to still set it up. It should kick into gear once everything has been updated on KWRI's end. Um, and if you guys have already set it up, you're in the clear, it kind of grandfathers you in. If you guys made any changes at all, make sure that you are clicking on save changes at the bottom. And then we should get this little pop-up and then we can go ahead and X out of it. This is just our confirmation, letting us know everything was updated. Last but not least, before jumping into actual smart plans, we do wanna make sure that our toggle switch on the top right is showing a green bubble. If you're seeing a gray bubble, this means that all of that information you just went ahead and put together is not actually being shared with your marketing. So we wanna make sure that this is toggled to being a green dot. If you're seeing a gray dot, if you click it, it will automatically toggle over for you. Once you guys have done that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into smart plans. If you guys ever question which one is which, you have your white KW and the red square. This will label each one of your tabs, sometimes makes it a little bit easier. Smart plans is going to be the fourth one down, right underneath our tasks. And it usually takes a second to load. Don't panic, just give it a second to refresh itself. <clears throat> Once we get into this section, this is where your smart plans are held. So anytime you're looking to set up a smart plan, customize a smart plan, see if maybe you have one already active, all of that is going to be done under this tab. A couple of things I wanna go over with you guys first before diving into actual smart plans is just what is what. So for starters, when we first click on smart plans, you'll notice that it drops us on the tab, my smart plans. All this means is the smart plans that you guys are seeing on this list right here have already been activated by you as the agent or maybe activated by our setup team if you're a newer agent. Some offices set some up originally, so you might have a couple showing up here. You may have nothing. Don't panic. It doesn't mean you don't have access to anything. It just means you haven't made any live yet. 
just because they're showing up under this section also doesn't mean that any of your contacts are set up on them yet. So also don't panic about that. If you're seeing a ton of smart plans here, you may have added them previously. You may have added them when command first rolled out and you just may not have added contacts to them yet. Again, no worries. In order to check and see if a smart plan is set up with contacts, you would see a number under the contacts tab. So if you're not seeing any numbers under the contacts tab, if you're just seeing little dashes, it just means they're live and they're ready for contacts to start being added. However, no one is currently receiving that smart plan. You can also sort these columns, which is pretty cool. So if you're looking to sort them alphabetically, you can just categorize them by clicking it and it will put them in alphabetical order for you. You can also sort them by contacts as well as date created, which is pretty neat. Just in case you guys are looking for a specific plan, you'll notice that Lori has some from like 2020, 2022. If you guys have an older plan, you can sort it based on created and you can locate it much easier. You guys also have access to search your smart plan. So if you remember the exact name that that smart plan has, you can also search that way, which is pretty cool. Just keep that in mind, especially once you guys are kind of adding to your smart plans. I've seen agents who have like 50, 60 smart plans set up under their account. If you ever get to that point, going through page by page is definitely going to become tedious. This will allow you to locate a specific plan nice and easy. In regards to the actual smart plan lines, couple of things to keep in mind, which we'll also be going over under the library in a second. You have a preview for each smart plan by clicking on this little triangle. Once you click on the triangle, you'll notice it gives you pretty much a preview of what that smart plan is going to do. It breaks down its purpose. So it's going to start by kind of prompting a phone call. You'll notice if I hover over it, it even gives you a script. This is pretty neat. Then it gives you a 30 day delay. Then it's going to do a touch task, meaning it's just kind of letting you know what needs to happen. This one looks like we would be contacting them via social media. Then there's another 30 day delay, then another touch task. This looks like it would be a handwritten note or a personalized text message. This would not be through Twilio. This is actually telling the agent to send a personalized text message to this client. Then a 29 day delay, and then this text message. This is actually set up through Twilio. So it's letting you know the text message that is going to go out and it's letting you know in what sequence they will go out. So this is set up in a way that the first text message will go out first. Then once the plan is runs through again, the second text message will go out. Third time it's run, the third text message will go out. Fourth time it's run, the fourth text message will go out. So it's kind of nice. It allows you guys to just set them up on this smart plan and kind of leave them and it will just go through that plan itself. You'll notice it ends with, whoop, you'll notice it ends with restart smart plan four times. This is something that you guys can utilize on any smart plan that is set up, which we're gonna go over how to actually customize these as well. But just so you guys can kind of see what a preview is. What is this smart plan going to do for you? What is it going to send out to your clients? What's its purpose? Anytime you guys are interested in figuring that out, this is also going to be the same option under the library, which is where we're going to locate smart plans that your peers have created, as well as smart plans that your Keller Williams International and possibly even Market Center staff have provided to you. So we're gonna minimize that. Again, we have this is where your contacts, or better yet, an eyeball will show up if your contacts are um, added to the smart plan, which you can click on and see. It will also let you know how many people are currently set up on that smart plan if you guys are looking to check that out. We also have a created date, then the duration. This just means how long is that smart plan going to run? Um, this is giving you a heads up that it will run for 90 days before it repeats itself. Total touches, there are four touches involved. This is how many times you would essentially be communicating with the client. All the way over to the right, we have our actions. First one being add contact. You can do this manually by clicking on add contact. Um, this is something that you can do, again, based on the actual smart plan itself. When you click on add contact, it's going to allow you to manually select people from your database up to 20 people a time based on tag, or you can individually locate them based on their name. This gets very redundant. So if you are looking to add a large number of contacts, we're also gonna go over how to add contacts in bulk up to 500 a time. Edit, if you wanted to edit something specific within that smart plan, whether it's the text message, maybe you wanted to reorganize text message comes out first, then an email, then a phone call, you guys can actually reorganize it and kind of tweak it. That would all be done under the edit option. 
Then we have our three dots. You have a couple of options, one being copy. Copy is just going to give you an exact replica of this smart plan, allowing you to make any edits that you might want to. Maybe you like the layout of this smart plan and you want to use it for some clients, but you want to tweak some of the information and use it for a different batch of clients, a different tag, a different type of client. That will allow you to kind of replicate what you already have and tweak it accordingly instead of having to reinvent the wheel. So instead of having to completely recreate that smart plan, it gives you a carbon copy that you can go in and edit. You also have published to library. Published to library is how you can actually share a smart plan that you have created with all of your peers. This is something, again, that is going to share it with all of your peers. So anybody within the Keller Williams International Network would have access to this smart plan. This is great when Market Center staff is looking to share smart plans. Maybe they're looking to share them with the Market Center. Maybe they're looking to share them with everyone. However, when you click publish to library, it shares it with everyone. So that means, again, anyone within the Keller Williams network is going to have access to this. If you're on a team and you publish something to the library, it's going to give it to every single Keller Williams agent, every staff member that has access to command, they will have access to locate this particular smart plan. You also have access to delete it. You are not able to delete a smart plan that has contacts linked up. So if you are seeing an eyeball and a number, they would need to be unsubscribed in order to delete a smart plan. You would also have to unsubscribe clients if you are looking to make edits to a smart plan. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Except for that. As far as the published tab goes, that's just going to let you know any smart plans that you have actually gone ahead and published to library, they will show up on the published tab for you just so you can see them. Now we're going to go ahead and actually take a look at the library. The library is where we're going to locate smart plans. So anytime you guys are logging into command and you're looking for a smart plan, or maybe you're looking to create a completely custom smart plan, but you're not sure where to start, the library is a great stepping stone. This is where we're going to be able to see any smart plans that your peers have created, Market Center staff may have shared, also the plans that are already provided to you guys by Keller Williams International. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the library tab. Once the library tab loads, a couple things to keep in mind. You also have a search feature here. The search feature is amazing because you guys can come in here as agents who are maybe just trying to get your footing with smart plans. Maybe you know that you want an open house follow-up smart plan. You can actually come in here and type in open house follow-up and it will pull up all open house follow-up smart plans that are that have been provided by other agents. Other agents may have created something that worked for them and they shared a generic smart plan. The beauty of this is it's just going to allow you to not only see what other agents are doing, but you're also able to utilize them. So you can actually click add smart plan and that's going to add it to your smart plans where you'll then have the same access to make edits. You can customize any wording. You can adjust text messages. You can add additional steps, maybe remove steps that don't apply to you. Maybe it has a text message option that would require Twilio and you're not you're not interested in Twilio yet, you can actually remove the text message portion. It essentially gives you kind of like a roadmap that you can customize to fit your needs as an agent. So this is pretty cool. Definitely something to keep in mind. You can also sort based on a couple of things. So for example, author name. Maybe you have a staff member in your office that mentioned they created a smart plan, they shared it in the library. You can actually pull it up based on their name if you're looking for plans that they've provided. You can also do it based on the description, which is fantastic. So in other words, if they, if you're looking for something that maybe just mentions open house in the description, you can pull it up that way as well. Chances are you will end up with, depending on how specific your search is, if I reduce this to just open house, we pull up a ton. I have 177 results now that have open house in the description. So this is just a great thing to keep in mind if you're looking to kind of filter. Um, you also have more specifics if you click on the filter option. Duration, you can check what type of duration you want, recurring, zero to three months, nine to 12, whatever it may be. You can also do multiple items. So maybe you're looking for zero to three months and they have to be by a specific author. Um, or if you want to do touches, downloads, or the rating, 
Rating is also a great option because obviously if it has a higher rating, that means that more agents are not only utilizing, but they're also providing their own feedback. So if you guys are looking for a smart plan and you're not sure where to start, this is a great way to kind of just get a feel for what's out there already before you start creating a smart plan from the ground up. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this and I'll X out of that just so we can go over the basics. So now that you guys kind of have an idea as to how to use the search feature, if you're really unsure where to start, this is also a great option. We have our featured smart plans. Featured smart plans are exactly that. They're just featured by Keller Williams International. They usually have very high download options. You'll notice that 13,589 agents have downloaded this smart plan. That's a lot of agents. That means there's that many agents that have thought, okay, this is something that I can add to my smart plans and either customize further, tweak to fit my needs, anything along those lines. So this is something that you guys have access to. Very similar to before when we kind of took that preview into consideration, view steps is going to do the exact same thing. So if you see this smart plan and you're like, okay, this kind of gives me a brief overview, but what is it actually going to provide my clients? We can go ahead and click on view steps and it's going to actually break down exactly what that smart plan is going to do for you as an agent and provide your clients as you add them to it. So the first thing is it's going to automatically link up the monthly neighborhood nurture, which we're going to go over in a couple of minutes. Monthly neighborhood nurture is a way for you guys to send neighborhood statistics out to your clients and it happens automatically. Pretty cool. It's actually really cool. It's one of my favorite smart plans. Then there's a 10-day delay, phone call, 10-day delay, touch task. This is going to set up a touch task in order for you to send an email. And you'll notice when I hover over it, it gives us that little blurb. Send an email to the buyer or seller. Um, and then it gives you kind of like a brief description in regards to what you should be emailing them. Another 10-day delay, text messages. He also has it set up so that it's going to be repeating itself. And the smart plan is actually smart enough to know if you add John Smith to this smart plan and it's going to be repeating itself, John Smith gets the first text message. On the second loop, he gets the second text message. Third loop, he gets the third te text message, et cetera. So it's automatically smart enough to send out that next text message based on how many times he's been run through the smart plan. And then once he's gone through the full completion of the smart plan, the smart plan will end and it will remove that client for you. It's pretty cool. These smart plans are actually really smart. So when it comes down to it, that's a great option for you guys as well. Then it, at the bottom, you'll notice, try not to hover over that SMS one again. Um, at the bottom, you'll notice that it has it repeating six times and you'll notice there are six text messages. So it is smart enough to realize, okay, it has to run six times in order for them to get each text message. So if this is something that you guys wanted to add, you would click on add to smart plan. Now I'm going to go through the process just so you guys can see exactly what it will look like. I'm going to go ahead and just click on add smart plan. What it's going to do here, and this is a perfect example, is because this smart plan is utilizing an additional smart plan, it's going to make me download that additional smart plan first. Once I get my little success button, I can X out click add again, and it should, it's taking a second for it to recognize it. Once it actually downloads it, then I'll have access to download the actual My Long-Term Nurture. Anytime you have a smart plan that is essentially piggybacking off of another smart plan, so you'll notice again, it requires you to have this one because this is what it actually starts with. It won't let me download the other one until this one is recognized, which usually takes about 15 minutes. So we'll jump back to this one in a second. But just in case you guys ever come across that, download the first one, give it a couple minutes. Sometimes you have to refresh the page and then it will let you download the new one. Cancel out this. We'll go through them and then I'll come back to this one. But you guys do have access to your featured. Think of these as just really popular smart plans. This is the one with the blue background as well. These will rotate out, which is also really cool. So in other words, they're not going to remain the same. Um, this will depend on which ones are kind of popular that week. Um, just like radio stations have their like hit however many songs, hit 30, same idea. It's essentially going to rotate out the popular smart plans for you. We have our Keller Williams provided smart plans underneath that. These are fantastic if you're unsure where to start and you really just have no idea where you want to really start with smart plans. 
KW-provided smart plans are not as customizable as the other plans. So that's something to keep in mind as far as text and verbiage and just kind of what's going to be going out to your clients. They are not as customizable in order to make it easier for it to apply to every agent, for it to apply to every client. So rather than it being more specific to maybe renters or more specific to first time home buyers, things like that, these are going to be more general and generic in order to kind of allow you to add your entire database to them. For these smart plans, one I do recommend adding is going to be either the biweekly neighborhood nurture or the monthly neighborhood nurture, which is on the next page. And I just saw um, a question come through on how to add that. We do have a specific tip video that goes over this as well, but we are going to go over it today just to kind of show you guys some of the basics. So I'm going to go ahead and add the bi-weekly just so it's in my smart plan so I can show you guys how to kind of set that up as well. Um, if you guys are looking to do the monthly, it is on the second page, which we'll go over in a second too, um, just in case you guys have clients who are maybe looking for an email every 30 days instead of every 14. So I'll go ahead and do add smart plan. We'll just do download. If you guys ever click on a smart plan and it won't let you download it, all it means is you already have it. This just means it's sitting under my smart plans. Um, as far as the KWRI provided plans, a lot of these plans will not allow you to download them twice. Um, this is not an error or anything. It essentially is just making sure that you realize that you already have that exact smart plan already launched, where this smart plan in particular is not one that can be customized downloading it more than month, once would just be redundant. It's essentially just gonna cause confusion for you as the agent. Um, so for these smart plans, if you go to click download and it's not letting you, don't panic. It just means it's already under here for you. So I'm gonna click on download just so we have that. I have my green ribbon saying it's good to go. For smart plans provided by Keller Williams International, I definitely recommend that you kind of toggle through these and just take a look. You guys can look at the view steps for each of them um, and just know that these are, very general smart plans. Again, great stepping stone to kind of get those started. And then for our monthly, if you guys are looking to do the monthly versus biweekly, you guys have access to add that one as well. Um, one thing I do want to address is there is also a birthday smart plan. There's a birthday smart plan and a home anniversary that's going to be on the next page. Those are also great smart plans. If you happen to have the home anniversary and birthdays on file for a lot of your database, this is going to allow you to add those clients to those smart plans. And it essentially triggers that smart plan based on their birthday on file. These are the only two smart plans available that are actually date triggered as of right now. So in other words, if you were looking to create a custom birthday smart plan, that's unfortunately not an option yet without you manually triggering that smart plan, which is definitely a little bit of a pain. Um, so by utilizing the KWRI provided birthday smart plan and the KWRI provided home anniversary smart plan, it's going to allow you to actually trigger those based on the date without having to manually do anything. So if you have 25 people who have birthdays on file, my personal recommendation is maybe go through your contacts and tag them accordingly with a birthday tag or a home anniversary tag, something along those lines. Then as you kind of add in new contacts, you're importing contacts, keep utilizing those tags and you can then add them based on the tag. Makes life a little bit easier. The tagging system under contacts is phenomenal. It's going to allow you guys to keep things as organized as possible. But this one will trigger based on date and then so will your home anniversary. Same thing, whatever date you guys have on file within that contact profile, it will trigger based on that date for you. Um, and then it just kind of starts the smart plan. Everything from reminders to reach out to them, touch task, um, phone call, it gives you a little bit of a like script just to reach out to them. And then it's a six day delay in between. It does start six days prior to the date. So your actual phone call will be on the anniversary. Smart plan is really smart. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Click that of that one. The other one that I definitely recommend kind of launching is going to be your Promote My App Smart Plan, which I also cover in the mobile app class. So if you guys already did that one, you likely already have this live. But this is a smart plan that's very diverse in the sense that every single client that you guys have in your database will benefit from that smart plan. It's essentially just going to promote your, your personalized um, client-facing app. 
So if you have a somebody who's looking to list, they can look at properties in the area and kind of get their own comparison. If you have somebody who's looking to buy, they'll have access to utilize that. If you have maybe an investor who's looking in multiple areas, the app doesn't lock them into one area. They can actually look anywhere in the United States and parts of Canada. So this is also a very diverse smart plan in the sense that no matter who you have in your database, they'll get something out of it. So this is a great option as well. Scrolling down a smidge more, we have our top rated and what's new. So these are just going to be ones that essentially have really good ratings coming in, which is fantastic. Um, you guys do have access to kind of sort accordingly as well with the filter, but these are just recommended ones. You guys can toggle through, you can click see all. The only thing I do recommend is where there is 1500 or 1500 plus. By using the search option, it's just going to allow you to kind of narrow it down a little bit. So if you are looking for a holiday smart plan, maybe Valentine's Day, Easter, whatever it may be, both of these already passed, but I'm sure Christmas and things will be coming out soon, Thanksgiving. Um, I know Labor Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, we saw the, a lot of those coming in as well. You have access to kind of come in here and you can even manipulate ones from past years to fit the current year. Um, a lot of the marketing provided with those smart plans will stay the same. It's more so just for the new year. So you guys have access to those as well. And then what's new? These are just brand, brand new. So you'll notice that the start date for these, these were published today within the library. So just something to also keep in mind. Um, but you guys have access to filter all of these, which is pretty cool. Um, if you guys have some time, definitely come back in here and just kind of use the search function and poke around. Open house follow-ups are fantastic. Facebook ad follow-ups, check on some holidays, um, even minor holidays. Um, I've seen some agents do smart plans for like, I can't remember the exact date, but there's like quesadilla day or whatever, ice cream day, national ice cream day, things like that. There's some pretty funny holiday things in here that just kind of, it gives you a reason to reach out to your clients and remind them that you're there for all of their real estate needs. Um, so even something like that, where it's kind of fun and just gets them involved, you guys can come in here, search, and just kind of take a look and see what's available to you. That way, again, you're not reinventing the wheel and it allows you to piggyback off of what your peers and or staff members have already shared with you. I'm going to go back to my smart plans tab. <clears throat> Starting to lose my voice. I apologize <coughs> for this section. Um, now that I've gone ahead and kind of added that smart plan, again, you'll notice that my created date has it right here, which I love. It's already showing me which ones are already added. I'm going to go ahead and actually edit an existing plan, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, and then I'll also go through and show you create really quick, just so you guys can see. They're the exact same. Thankfully, the process looks the same. And then we're going to go ahead and actually add some contacts to a smart plan. Again, and I'm going to say, I know I've said it before, and I apologize, but I always, always, always recommend adding yourself to a smart plan before you start adding clients, just so you can make sure it looks correct. Make sure the footer's correct. That's going to pull from your marketing profile. Make sure you understand that the reply email is up and running. Also make sure the test contact that you're using is a personal email. So if you're using your business email on your test contact and you set yourself up on a smart plan, it will not work properly. So if you're using John Smith at kw.com as your vanity email, as your marketing email for all of your KW platforms, that's your reply email. If your test contact is set up as John Smith at kw.com, the system gets confused because it's emailing from that email to that email. So it sometimes gets a little bit funny when it comes to testing that. So use a personal email, Hotmail, a different Gmail account, AOL, whatever it may be, or spouse's email. Use something else to test these. That way you can make sure they look beautiful before you start sending it out to clients. So for editing an existing smart plan, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the pencil for this one just to show you guys what it will look like. So any smart plan that you guys pull from the library, you will have access to click on the pencil. And it does usually take a second to load because it's pulling all of those steps and allowing them to be editable for you as the agent. So once we come in here, anytime you're in any smart plan, and this will be a KWRI provided smart plan, one provided by a peer, even if you're creating a brand new smart plan, you're going to see add trigger event. This is really cool. This is going to allow you to add a trigger based on the tags you're using in your database. 
So basically this means if this is a smart plan, you want everybody tagged as buyer and seller to get, you can actually create a trigger anytime you import a contact with a buyer tag or a seller tag, or you capture a lead and you manually tag it, or you update a tag in your database and you tag, you know, Wanda Smith as a buyer or a seller, it will automatically add them to this smart plan. So you're not running back and forth trying to update these. The system takes care of it for you as that tag is added. So I'm gonna go through what this looks like and how to set it up because it's fantastic. So if I click on add trigger event, you'll notice that category and trigger event are not editable. They're essentially locked in stone. Category, it's always gonna pull from your contacts, which is perfect. Trigger event is always gonna be based on the contact tag. There isn't another option yet. However, with this showing here, we think there might be something down the line. Um, but as of right now, it's only the tag that you can actually trigger based on. Then for our actual tags, we can select any tag that we have created already. Um, it does need to be a tag that you've already created because generally when you go to customize one or create one, it gets a little bit funny. So just make sure it's created already in the back end of your account. But if I come in here and I know we have a test one, so test database, any of these I can do, I'll just do test contact. Once I've selected my tag, I can go ahead and do choose trigger. It's going to let me know, and this is a little disclaimer, it's going to let me know anyone who already has this tag will not be added to this smart plan. That would need to be done in bulk, which we're gonna go over next. However, this means any contact going forward, if I tag them with test contact, it's automatically going to add them to the smart plan. The beauty of this, this includes imports. So if you have a massive database or you're doing open houses left and right, and you have lists that you're importing with that from those open houses or from door knocking or anything along those lines, if you are making sure this tag is on that physical import, it's actually gonna trigger the smart plan for you automatically. The only contacts it will not add are the contacts that are already tagged with this tag when I'm creating the trigger. So going forward, the system takes care of it for you. So that takes a lot of pressure off of you as the agent to go in and manually add contacts, which is pretty nice. So if I do confirm trigger, it adds that in here for me. And you'll see, I can add another one. For these, you can add up to 10, which is pretty cool. So if you guys have 10 tags, you wanna be set as triggers, you guys can come in here and do that. Once I've done that, you'll notice that I have all of my options or essentially all of my breakdowns for this particular smart plan are showing up here. For my description, you'll notice that it has kind of like a, I guess you could say a script, but a very general script, kind of like a bullet point of what you should be touching base with them when this prompts up. The beauty of this is just like the text messages. This one does have those four text messages and this smart plan is going to repeat four times. This is letting you know that first call, you would do essentially bring this up. Second call, you're going to bring this up. Third call, this. Fourth call, this. It's kind of letting you know which one would apply, which is pretty cool. Um, as far as this goes, you guys can customize this. As you can see, when I click on the cursor, I have access to edit that. Um, same thing with if you guys want to kind of adjust what the actual task name will be, you can also do that, which is pretty nice. You guys have access to customize this however you see fit. Scrolling down a smidge more, you can also update any of the delays. So maybe if you guys look at a smart plan and you realize, okay, this has a three-day delay, maybe you want to push it to seven, Anything along those lines, especially if you're running multiple smart plans at the same time, keep an eye as to how frequent they're going out. You want to make sure that you're not bombarding your clients with like seven emails in the course of two days. You want to make sure that those are spread out accordingly in order to provide value. So if you guys are noticing that maybe the days are too small and you need to stretch them out a little bit more, you do have access to customize that how you see fit. You can either physically type them in or use the arrows if it's only going to be a couple of days, you can tweak them. Scrolling down a smidge more, we also have our create task. This is going to create a physical task within your tasks option of command. One thing to keep in mind with tasks, and this is something I'm going to explain it as thoroughly as I can. If you guys have questions, just drop them in the chat and I will try and explain it a little bit further. A task will only show up under tasks when this particular part of the smart plan has gone live. So if you start the smart plan today, it would prompt the make a call. Then there's a 33 day delay. Then the task will trigger. So that means in 34 days, this task will show up under tasks. 
it doesn't show up the second you add somebody to a smart plan. So that's probably the best way to explain it. If you guys get stuck on this, just let us know and we can kind of take a look at it to make sure that it's pulling properly. But that is a common misconception that when you add a client, the task will show up automatically. The task will not trigger itself until it physically is triggered within the smart plan. So again, if you started this today and added somebody, you'd get the prompt for the call. Then 34 days later, because plus the one day, this would actually trigger itself under your tasks icon. I hope that makes sense. If you guys have questions on that, just let us know. But that's definitely a common misconception with the tasks itself. We have another delay, and then we have our physical task. This is going to create a task for you again after the 64 days, because now we're at 64 days, 65, 64 days. It will create the task under your task option. And it's just letting you know that you should essentially be sending over a customized text at some at, of some sort, whether it's, you know, how's your wife, Stacy? How's your dog? Whatever bubbles, you can essentially reach out to them accordingly and send a little bit more of a customized message. Each time you guys are customizing something on a smart plan, my personal recommendation is to save them individually. That way you can just make sure they are locked in stone, especially Command sometimes times out. If you haven't noticed, if you stay logged into command and maybe you get up to go and make a coffee and you get caught up and you're talking to someone and you come back 45 minutes later, it may have bumped you out of this. So each time you make a change, click on the little check mark. It's just going to set in stone exactly what you've already done. That way, if you come back and command happen to have timed out, you don't lose all of that work that you've been doing. Scrolling down a smidge more, this is your Twilio section. Lori does not have Twilio set up. So this is a perfect example of what you will see if you opt out of Twilio. A couple of things can happen. A, you can leave this in place if you plan on signing up for Twilio, but if Twilio is not something you're looking to use, you can actually delete the entire portion itself. So if I'm not using Twilio, I can actually remove that entire portion. And then I would also likely remove the delay, that way it's not ending with the delay. But now you'll see the Twilio portion is gone and I don't even have to worry about text messages going out. If I am interested in text messages going out, I can leave those in there. Just keep in mind, if you don't have Twilio set up, it is going to essentially assign a task for every single client you add to the smart plan, letting you know the, the text message did not go out. So that's something to keep in mind. In regards to plugging in the names, a question just came over, does it auto fill my name and their name to the blank spaces? If it is showing up like this, this beautiful teal, that will actually pull based on the contact profile, which is pretty cool. Um, if you guys want your name to show up, you'll notice that we have contact first name, last name. For notes specifically, it's not going to have the agent information, but as far as like your options go, these will auto pull from your contact profile. So that's something to keep in mind, which is pretty nice. In regards to your name, I generally recommend just putting your name because really these smart plans should only be coming from you. Um, however, if you're looking to have your name plugged in and you're on a team side, team smart plans are a little bit different. So we do have a customized class that goes over that just in case that applies to you. But if you're an independent agent, I would just put your name in here. That way you never have to worry about it. Um, as far as your options on the right hand side, again, you guys can add additional tasks as well. So if you guys want to create a custom task, prompt a phone call, add maybe some bullet points of what you want to hit, send an email, text message, delay, and maybe you want to add them to another smart plan. Once this is done, you can plug that in as well. And it will allow you to select from any of your active smart plans. So as long as you've already added that to your smart plans, you'll have access to select it from the drop down list. That, that way it doesn't confuse her. Um, and then we also have restart smart plan, which you'll notice this one is set to restart four times in order to accommodate the four scripts for phone calls, as well as the four text message options that will be going out. So that's just, again, something to keep in mind. Um, in regards to the email option, we do have a tip video that goes over how to add in an actual email campaign as the email option. I'm gonna go over this part really quickly. We're definitely going over on time and I apologize, um, but I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like really quick. We do have a tip video that goes over it as well and goes much more in depth. But in regards to your email portion, if you're utilizing the email option under Smart Plan, you'll need a subject. It will essentially plug your reply to email from command mail automatically. You'll notice this is not something I can edit. 
it does pull directly from that command mail portion. So you wanna make sure this shows up properly. Subject, you would plug that in. Then we have our simple or designs. Simple is exactly that. It is a very simple email. It's only text. So you guys can plug that in. You guys can adjust it a little bit, bold, italicized, or underlined. But as far as the actual email goes, it's the equivalent of opening up Gmail and just kind of typing in a new response. Not super flashy, not colorful, anything like that. It's just text. If you guys have a design you have created under the email campaign or email design templates, you can pull those over. So by clicking on designs, it will allow me to select any design that I've already created, which I have a test one in here. So I'm gonna show you guys. If you haven't used designs yet, don't panic. They are very, very, very straightforward. They're very similar to kind of the layout of Canva. So if you've ever used Canva before, there's a lot of overlap there as well. We also do an entire class on creating email design campaigns. So if you guys are interested in kind of creating more of a colorful email that's gonna be going out, especially for maybe a holiday, anything along those lines, you can create those through that designs tab. But when it comes to adding it into a smart plan, once you've created and make sure it's an email design, you'll have access to select it from here and it pulls up the designs that we've already created. And you would just select whichever one you're looking to use. And now it's gonna be plugged in. So it shows me exactly what the design is going to look like and everything. So that's just how you guys can drop them in um, just in case you are looking to, this card changes just in case you guys are looking to plug in kind of like a pretty email design, you guys do have access to that. It's you're not stuck with just text. Um, but if you guys are adding that in again, save it based on the little, um, just do test. Yeah. And then save it. And then that will plug it in there for you as well. So now that I've kind of gone over how to customize an existing smart plan, I'm gonna go ahead and just save on the top right this saves the overall smart plan for me. So it kind of locks everything that I've done. That way I, now I can start adding contacts. So now that I've gone ahead and saved everything, I can back up. All of my changes will be applied to the smart plan under my smart plan. So now if I expand the one that I just made edits to, you'll notice that now my email is showing up. It's not going to show a preview because it's an image. So it won't allow me to actually pull that but you'll notice that my text messages are gone. My HTML email is in there. All of my delays, my 33 delay was updated. So it's a nice way to just confirm any edits that you made were actually seen as well and saved. So now that we've gone through that, I'm going to go in and show you guys how to mass add contacts to a physical smart plan. Um, so as far as adding contacts to a smart plan, A, you guys have access to click on this particular icon associated with the smart plan itself. And when we click on that, it's going to allow you to either filter based on tags or names, but you'll notice that we only have up to 20 showing up. So even if I do select all, it's only going to select up to 20 contacts. If you have a larger database and you're looking to add like 2000 contacts to a smart plan, this is going to take you a little while to do. You can do this in bulk via the contact section. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to add it through the physical contact section um, just to make things a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this. And we're just gonna click on the contacts tab. This is going to be the second tab from the top. Once we have this page populating, I'm going to show you guys a couple of quick things in regards to this section, just so you guys will know how to add contacts. One of the questions that we had earlier today in class was how to add, um, add a neighborhood nurture to the smart plan. So the neighborhood nurture smart plan, which is the one that we added to our smart plans earlier today, will automatically pull based on the neighborhoods that your client actually has set up. So in regards to kind of your clients, I have like a test filter set up, so it only shows our test contacts on here. But my recommendation is to set up kind of like a test contact under your contact section. Again, personal email. Don't use your marketing email that you use for real estate just so you can actually utilize the test portion. But I have one already set up. So this is my test contact that I use for kind of Lori's account. I'm going to go ahead and open this contact just to show you guys first how to kind of see if a neighborhood is added. Then I'm going to show you guys how to bulk add contacts to a physical smart plan. 
So if I open this up, the first thing you guys are pretty much seeing is all of the neighborhoods that we have added here. There's a ton. My recommendation is if you guys have um, an age or a client in your database and it has an address on file, so if they have a home address or um, a primary address on file, it will automatically add one neighborhood under the primary neighborhood. If that is a tiny neighborhood, if it doesn't have stats, if it doesn't have local listings or anything like that, it will not utilize that smart plan. So in other words, in order for the monthly neighborhood or the biweekly neighborhood smart plan to go out, the neighborhood needs to have statistics and or active listings within that area. If neither of those apply, it will remove them from the smart plan. So if you ever see that, don't panic. It's just letting you know that there is not substantial data to send out to your client. And instead of sending out a blank email, it's removing them from the smart plan. So it's to protect you from sending out a blank email. To add neighborhoods, you guys can click on the actual add neighborhood portion. And this is going to allow you to either manually type in a neighborhood, which is kind of a pain, especially if you don't know the specific name of the neighborhood. You can also do find on map, which I personally think is way easier. So if I locate find on map, I can go ahead and type in a specific location. It kind of drops you just in Kansas. Um, but if I come in here and say they're looking in like Boston, Massachusetts, I can just plug in whichever neighborhood I think is closest to it select it, and it's just gonna zone me in on that area. I can then zoom in, I can zoom out, and as I zoom in, you'll notice that I definitely get more neighborhoods populating, and I can just start selecting the ones that I want to add my client to. So if I just select a couple of random neighborhoods, you'll notice that they're showing up on the bottom. I can do my save icon, and it just adds them to kind of like my my plethora of already added neighborhoods. These areas are all over the place too. These are just kind of like my test neighborhoods, just in case you guys are also noticing that. Um, but these are essentially the neighborhoods now on that contact profile. So if I go ahead and now add this person to the neighborhood smart plan, it's going to give them information on these particular neighborhoods. So this is the beautiful part about the neighborhood smart plans. If you have a bunch of clients and they're looking in different neighborhoods, you don't have a neighborhood smart plan per neighborhood. You actually update the information based on the contact profile and the system is smart enough to send these neighborhoods to this person, then the neighborhoods on another contact profile to that person. It is smart enough to handle that for you. So you will only have one monthly neighborhood nurture, one bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, and the system takes care of the rest once you've added neighborhoods. Pretty neat. So that's something that I wanted to kind of show you guys how to add people in bulk. If I go back to my contacts and I essentially have my contacts up, you can do this a couple of different ways. If you're looking to add them to the monthly or bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, I definitely recommend utilizing your filters because you'll notice if we click on filters, we now have an option that says has neighborhoods. This means that your contact has kind of been pre-qualified for the neighborhood portion. So if I select yes to has neighborhoods, it's going to only pull up contacts that have neighborhoods on file, meaning they can be added to those neighborhood nurtures. If they don't have a neighborhood on file, the second you add them, it's going to actually remove them because they don't have data to send out. So if you are doing the monthly neighborhood or the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, make sure that you're filtering based on yes, and then it will pull up only the contacts that have neighborhoods on file. If you're doing any smart plan, you can still filter based on tag. You can filter based on company, created, any of these options. And what it's going to do is once you click on apply, it's going to essentially sort out those contacts. Once we have our contacts limited to the ones we actually want to send out, this might be seven, it might be 70, it might be 700. All numbers will be completely usable for this. All we would want to do is select the most amount in order to do this in as much bulk as possible. So I have 500 selected. If I do 500, I only have three, so it's a little different on my end. But if you guys have up to 700 contacts, just make sure you have 500 selected. And then we can go ahead and just bulk select by checking off this white box next to name. Bulk select is going to make your select bulk action drop down box appear. This drop down box is then going to allow us to select add to smart plan. So this is how you guys can actually bulk add contacts to a smart plan. 
when it comes time for this, I can go ahead and do add to smart plan. For this one, I can do biweekly neighborhood nurture. I'm just gonna do biweekly for this one, but if you, whichever smart plan you guys are looking to add, you would just select whichever one. I'll be select. From here, we now have a couple of options. You'll get this for every smart plan. You can either start it now, meaning it's going to start immediately. You can either start it on the following date. This is fantastic for holiday smart plans. So if you maybe have a Christmas smart plan and you just wanna get ahead of it and you wanna start it on the 22nd of December, or Thanksgiving or whatever it may be, you can trigger it based on date, but it is only one date, so keep that in mind. Then we have stagger over the next few days. This is fantastic if you have a smart plan that is going to require you to reach out manually. If you are setting up your quarterly call smart plan or you're setting up something where you're going to be manually texting someone, stagger them. That way you're not having to send out 400 text messages manually on a Monday. This is going to allow you to kind of manipulate it so you're only doing like 20 phone calls a day or 20 text messages a day, anything along those lines. It's just going to kind of spread them out a little bit for you. So this is also a great option if you're doing something that, again, requires you to manually contact your database. I'm going to scroll up to the top. I'm going to do select now or start now and just do confirm. And it automatically adds them all to that smart plan. So. As far as what they're going to get, I'm going to show you guys this really quick. This is a screenshot from my email. I'm set up on Lori's, um, Lori's uh, monthly neighborhood nurture right now. You'll notice the email that it comes from. This is something to keep in mind. The email that any smart plan or really any email from command mail is going to be agent. And then it's your KWUID at mailer.kw.com. If they reply to this email, it will go to the reply email from your command mail. It also shows based on the name that you've set up under command mail. They also have access to unsubscribe. You'll notice it's right here. And then it also pulls all of your information based on your marketing profile. So this is where your brokerage logo shows up. This is where all of her information is showing up. We have her headshot. We have all of that. We have her website. You'll notice it's clickable because she has the HTTPS. Very helpful. And then this is what the neighborhoods actually look like. So it allows me to then click on Explore Neighborhood, which is going to pull up the active listings. It's going to pull up some statistics with that area. Um, it's pretty cool. So if I click on Explore Neighborhood, I'm going to try and do this without it opening a random, oh, it opened a random tab on a different screen. So this is what it would look like. It has all of my neighborhoods and then it also has the listings. I can scroll down and see like the map on the left-hand side. I can also do my neighborhood stats. I have access to all of this. And as a client, I can also add additional neighborhoods. Pretty cool. Um, it also has all of her branding. You'll notice her logo looks much prettier here. So does the brokerage logo. Neighborhood stats, same thing. I can toggle through my neighborhoods and pull up stats for these actual neighborhoods. And it just kind of allows me to toggle back and forth. Um, so this is what would go out with the neighborhood nurture. Um, this is biweekly and monthly. The biweekly and monthly just has to do with how often they're going out, but the actual layout and email that will be sent out is the exact same. Scrolling down a smidge more on the preview, this is where it pulls up your additional information. Um, this is standard. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help. That will be on everything. Then it will have your first name, your headshot, some additional information, a download my app icon. And then this is where the team logo shows up. If you don't have a team logo added, this is where you get that error, no image found. So if you don't have something added in there, this is where it's going to show up, just something to keep in mind. Then it has her brokerage information on the left-hand side. Um, and then you also have access to unsubscribe again. So it does give them multiple options just in case that's something that you're worried about for compliance. It does give them access to unsubscribe. But this is something just to keep in mind. This section here will automatically show up on every single email that you send out through command mail when it comes to any sort of like smart plan email, any sort of HTML email, email campaign that you send out. This is the footer. This is what it's going to look like. It also has the compliance text provided by Keller Williams International on every email. You don't have to worry about it. It happens automatically. And then same thing with the header. The header is pretty much the same on every email that you guys will send out. So just so you guys can kind of see a preview for it. Um, but that's what it will look like. And again, just kind of as a general rule of thumb, set yourself up as kind of like a test 
contact before you start bulk adding your contacts to smart plans. Um, let yourself kind of run the course of the smart plan before you go through and start adding contacts. But if you guys do start kind of messing around with it this week or even over the weekend, if you hit any snags, you have any questions, that's what we're here for. Shoot us an email, um, support at scottleroymarketing.com and I'll also drop it in the notes of the recording. Um, we're happy to answer any questions, especially if you're trying to kind of update something manually, we can always take a look and at least make sure that it's going to go out correctly. But always test it on yourself before you test it on clients. Um, I hope you guys got something out of class. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of the week. And as always, if you need anything, just let us know.